all right hello everyone in this video we're gonna start doing some fluid mechanics problems some momentum transfer problems so we're gonna start off with a very simple one of the most simple um, fluid mechanics problems it's called the cuvette flow now we have two solid plates okay i have two solid plates and between them i have a newtonian fluid okay i have a newtonian fluid trapped between two plates and the plate the upper plate starts moving Okay, the upper plate starts moving at a velocity u. Okay, the upper plate starts moving. All right, and as a result, the fluid that's adjacent, that's attached to the plate, the fluid that's attached to the plate is also going to start moving because of the no slip boundary condition. Okay, fluids adjacent to a solid boundary have the same velocity as the solid boundary. Okay, and uh, all right. So we have a, the thickness of the fluid layer, the uh, thickness, this thickness right here, okay? Uh, a fluid layer of thickness delta is trapped between two solid plates of length L and W. And see how the thickness delta is way smaller than the length and way smaller than W. And that's going to be, that's going to help us derive the solution. That's going to help us derive the velocity profile. You may assume steady state, laminar flow, and no applied pressure uh, pressure gradients. Okay. Steady state, laminar flow, no applied pressure gradient. Another assumption that I'm going to be using is Newtonian, Newtonian fluid. Okay. And before I go ahead, I should, uh, I'm just going to warn you guys. I'm going to be using the Navier-Stokes equation for this. Okay. And... In this problem, uh, there are some textbooks that would give you the, that would be able to give you the solution without Navier-Stokes equation, and uh, but I'm just going to do it a slightly harder, a slightly more complicated way. So, um, with that said, let's go at it. So, um, first, the first step is to pick your coordinates, and I'm going to pick Cartesian coordinates. So, the coordinate system that I'm going to be picking is Cartesian. All right. So I have my continuity equation, and continuity equation is just a total mass balance. Okay, just a total mass balance. And let's see, uh, now I have to simplify my continuity equation. All right, steady state, bye-bye. And I only have velocity in the x direction. If you go back to the problem, there is no, um, I do not have any velocity. I do not have any motion in the y or z direction. Therefore, there is, there is going to be no velocity in the y <clears throat> and no velocity in the z. So upon simplification, the continuity equation is going to give you this. All right, and this just means uh, the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to zero. That just means that the velocity in the x direction is not a function of x. It does not depend on x. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's going to help us in the. And that's going to help us in simplifying the Navier-Stokes equation. I'm going to highlight this. So. Whoa, 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 what do we have here? We have the Navier-Stokes equation in the, we have the Navier-Stokes equation in the Cartesian form. Ooh, so much mess. But let's make some sense out of this chaos. First up, steady state. Bye, bye, bye. Steady state. Okay, there is no velocity in y. Bye, bye, bye. There is no velocity in z. Bye, bye, bye. Why? Okay, let me let me use different colors for Z. Uh, let's use uh red for Z. Bye, bye. No, thicker. We need the thick one. Sorry. Uh, there we go. There we go. Bye, 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 bye. And if you look at the problem, the gravity is gonna be in the Y direction. The gravity is gonna be in the Y direction. Okay, this is the only gravity term that's going to survive. I don't need you. I don't need you. And there is no applied pressure gradient. 
Okay, so, uh, all right, let's start, let's pause for a moment. So far, what we've done is we've, uh, we've taken the steady state assumption. We've taken all the transient terms. We've canceled all the transient terms. Uh, next up, we've canceled all the all the vy terms. Okay, we've canceled all the vz terms, and we've all canceled the gravity terms. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on the equation that matters. The equation that's gonna matter the most is the one in which you have flow, which in our case is gonna be x direction. Okay, if you go back to the problem. The upper plate is moving in the positive x. So we're going to have a shear driven flow in the positive x direction. And let's see, step by step. Oh, you see this guy right here? This is zero. This is zero. Why is this zero? From continuity equation. Okay. A v, a v, y, uh, a v sub y term. That also goes away. Another v sub y term. Bye bye. And the V sub Z term. Bye bye. Okay, okay, okay. Therefore, this is also going to go away. Uh, let me choose the right. Let me keep my colors constant. Okay. We go to the continuity equation. All right. So, and this pressure term is going to go away. Because I said there is no applied pressure gradient. No applied pressure gradient. Pressure gradient, okay. All right, let's look at these two terms. Let's look at these two terms for now. Actually, I can just rewrite this from what I have. The Navier-Stokes equation from the x direction. That's just going to be, that's just going to be zero equal to the second square, the second derivative with respect to y plus the second derivative with respect to z. And now, right now I have a partial differential equation and I don't really like partial differential equations. So, this term actually right here is actually going to go to zero. And why is that? I need to explain that for, for a second. If we go back to the problem, I said that the thickness, okay, the thickness delta is way smaller than L and way smaller than W, which means that if delta, okay, I'm, now I'm developing the reasoning. If delta is way smaller than L, then that means that that's going to mean that, oops, give me a second. And delta V of X is much, much, much greater than the gradient in Z. Okay, this is the uh, mathematical implication of that. And I want you to think about it intuitively because the, because the thickness is way small. The thickness is extremely small. So that means that the gradient in the direction of thickness are going to be a lot greater than the gradients in thickness perpendicular to that direction. Okay, using that, using that uh, statement, our final ODE, our final ODE is going to be a second order differential equation. All right, very nice. Very nice. We have arrived at a second order ODE. All right. And in order to solve, in order to get a uh, complete solution, I need two boundary conditions. Two boundary conditions. BC1. And that's going to be at y equals zero. Our Vx was equal to u, the no slip boundary condition. And our boundary condition two is going to be at y equals delta, at y equals delta, the x is actually going to be equal to zero. Again, no slip, because the plate, the plate at the bottom is stationary. 
and i'll see you guys in the next part of this video where we perform the integration and um, just finish off finish the solution off all right thank you so much for sticking around